Hello, I'm Mike Gordon, and welcome back to my perfect playthrough of Pokemon Crystal for the Game Boy Color. It's been a while, but let's see with a recap. Uh, I got four gym badges last time. And I made my first set of trades with Pokemon... Wait, hold on. No, that, not this one. My first set of trades with Pokemon Yellow, which got me the three-star Pokemon. As well as a Vulpix and Mew. In exchange, I duped Ekans, Arbok, Meowth, Ekans, and Coffee, the Team Rocket 5, and passed them off to Yellow version. So, here are the stars right there. And I need, uh. Is there anything I want to. Drop off for the PC. Out the black belt and the elixir. Alright, I'm just gonna double check my uh, PC box. I want 99 black eyed percorns. So, yeah, it's been a while since I've last played Crystal version, but it's still Wednesday night. But it's almost 11, but it's almost midnight on a Wednesday. So while it's still nightfall and a Wednesday night, I'm actually going to head towards New Bark Town. There's a Pokemon right here. Nope. Uh, let's see, what items should I sell? Probably this par paralysis. This paralyzed heal. Eh, I'll save. You know, I'll save the berries until I complete the Moo Moo Milk side quest. In the meantime, there are some items I want. I need to pick up along the way. Yeah, hey, uh, Lapras are uh, surfing Pokemon blue instead of pink. That's interesting. Alright, our uh, first Pokemon capture of the day, sorry, night, is Master Ball. It is a Poliwag. Master Ball, go. When I'm done surfing these waters, I will use Sweet Scent on to capture Poliwhirl with. So this Poliwag is clearly a freebie. The swirl on its belly is its insides showing through the skin. Looks clear after it eats. Alright. Just barely finished that. I got the PP pee -pee up. Which is which is pretty good. And this is probably the last Serenia surf across. What? Is it a baller polywag? No, no, it's Poliwhirl. Alright, so we're gonna capture both surf encounters back to back without sweet scents. Alright, Master Ball, do your thing. Alright, we got Poliwhirl! Though it is skilled at walking, it prefers to live underwater where there is less danger. And there we pick up our first rare candy. Sweet. I just have to make it back to landfall, and our main objective here is actually... Well, first let's go up here. And try to catch a ghastly. Let's go, sweet scent. Alright, first try ghastly. Very nice. Alright, another master ball. I also forgot to mention I duped a bunch of items in my inventory. Alright, we caught Ghastly! 
Erupts its opponent in its gas-like body, slowly weakening its prey by poisoning it through the skin. Good nickname, Bassley? No. And, uh, we need to get two things. We need a Yanma Swarm, and we also need to get an Evolution, and we might as well get an Evolution Stone, too, while we're here. savings trick to try and end up some phone calls. Arnie, the bug catcher? Oh, Alright, good. We got ourselves a Yamma Swarm. And forewarning, I've been playing Gold Silver for so long that I'm not really taking the time to read any of the dialogue yet. That's something I have to take care of. But, we, here, we got Tolly Fisher Tolly, who in, uh, Gold and Silver, was previously named Fisher Chris. I have no idea why they changed his name from Chris to Tolly, but whatever. And right now, I'm actually giving Togepi 10 HP ups. And I deliberately waited on this, because what I did not know is that happiness gets boosted in the area in which your poke in which you caught or hashed your Pokemon. So boosting your since Togepi hatched a new Bark Town, feeding him those 10 HP ups gives him a massive boost, a massive percentage boost in affection and happiness. Now, I have to stop by and talk to Fisher Tolly, who's a little out of the way for my liking. Because this is literally... And while I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna use this opportunity to try and catch a Meryl. Probably could've... Ca Probably could've caught a Zubat at and Goldbat as well, but I don't have any friend balls yet. So, first try Meryl, level 20. It is Nightfall, so I could have caught one as a roaming encounter, but I chose the Surfing encounter because he's level 20 and thus require only one rare candy to evolve. What is this Ceres entry? The fur on its body naturally repels water. It can stay dry even when it plays in the water. Time to speak to uh, Fisher Tolly. It still wins at midnight, so there's really no reason for me to go any further. Because uh, Wesley of Wednesdays is still there. And we already got the black bell off of him, so there's no need to speak to him again. We have to wait till Thursday till tomorrow until we can re-enter like a rage. Alright, let's cut through here. Alright, what is it? Good. It's a Yamma. Uh, Bugcatcher Arnie did call us about a Yamma swarm, so it made perfect sense to get up here. And side note, it's been a while since I last played this game, so the day-night thing had shifted quite a few times since then. It can see in all directions without moving its big eyes, helping its spot attackers and food right away. Like, I think the last time I played Crystal version, I was able to get... 
Get a get a quillfish and dunspar swarm back to back. So let's try stopping by the radio tower here. Because we want to try to do the Boina game show. Uh, that's interesting. It's 11.40 Wednesday, a long time's passed. Why won't Boina do the password thing with us? I mean, it's still 11.40 p.m. Maybe I had to be here earlier, I don't know. So, since I picked up Eevee here, I'm gonna feed him the 10 HP ups here and now. Since that gives him a massive boost in happiness values this way. Oh, and speaking of happiness values... Let's head down to the under the Goldenrod Underground and give him a haircut from the younger brother. Once again, I'm going to manipulate this uh, to make sure that I get the uh, best, get the Evius Delight Icon instead. There, oh, Evie looks delighted. Now the Golden Rod Underground is still right is still viewed as being a part of Golden Rod City. Not the radio tower itself though. It's treated as a completely separate location. Oh yeah, I might as well use this opportunity to delete Buncatcher Arnie from the phone list. Right now I don't need to concern myself with a bunch of phone numbers. Another Pokemon I don't need to use Sweet Scent on. That's terrific. Master Ball, go! Three. Alright, we got Drowsy, because I'm so great. So great. When it twitches its nose, it can tell where someone is sleeping and what that person is dreaming about. Alright, and I'm going to cut through this little pond here. And I'm going to use Sweet Scent. Two Pokemon for us to catch here. Alright, the rare Gold Duck is first up. That's... that's convenient. Now I manipulated the gold duck specifically to be first. Why? Because chances are after this capture, I'll be able to run into a side duck without my nips. I got gold duck. It swims gracefully along on the quiet, slow-moving rivers and lakes of which is so fond. Alright, now for its evolve form. It's pre evolve form. That was easy, no need to manip for one. It's like a 90% accuracy. Alright, Master Ball, go. Alright. Got side up, cause I am so great. All right. <laughs> the only time it can use its psychic power is when its sleeping brain cells happen to wake. And that's basically all the encounters for Elix Forest. So I'm just going to go through the year. I don't really work. I'm not terribly concerned about getting to all these random cowards because deep down I actually do want.
I actually do want the time to roll over to midnight so it's a new day, but not too soon. I'm doing this now so I could go talk to Kurt and pick up the level ball. Now, and unlike in Gold Silver, I don't have to leave Kurt's house and then re-enter in order to talk and to convert our Apricorns into Pokeballs. And I can actually give him a whole host of Apricorns to turn into Pokeballs rather than doing it one at a time. Now, before I enter Slowpoke well, I want to go ahead and manip another account here. This one's for Quagsire. I already caught Looper in an earlier episode, so... This is the only new capture that I'm going to aim for here in Union Cave. At least for now. It ain't Friday yet, so I'm not in any hurry to go after Lapras. That first only appears on Fridays, by the way. Alright, Quagsire. Spy is always slimy. It often bangs its head on the river bottom as it swims but seems not to care. Alright, and that's it for now. But we will be back later on to take on Union Cave and the Mysteries of... The Ruins of Alf. Alright, so poke. Alright, let's go ahead and capture this guy. Doesn't matter what level he's on, so long as it's a slow poke. I caught slow poke, cause I am so great! It is always so absent Maya that it won't react. Even if its flavorful tail is bitten. Nickname Slipbook, Senate Bill's PC. Alright, Wild Zubat. And I could capture this one now, but I'm gonna return him out more later on, so. I don't feel the need to run into one now. Alright, I'll see that up here. Always safely. And since the water is still calm, I am heading up north in here. TM18, which is Rain Dance. Hey, I actually came prepared this time. Alright, slow bro without a sweet scent, Manip. Brilliant. Thanks, game. Now looking on the on the runtime, I can definitely tell it's not gonna the time isn't gonna roll over at midnight. Plus I need it to be morning, so an attached shelter won't let go because of the tasty flavor that oozes out of its tail. Yeah, I actually need the in-game time roll over to Thursday, and I also need it to be morning. Thursday morning in order to complete my ring captures. Let me see Slowpoke's evolutions throughout. Slowpoke with the King's Rock gets bitten by shoulder. Yeah, I actually forgot that I should probably read the text here. But basically tells us that Shell is that Slowpoke can evolve into a new Pokemon if taught, if holding a King's Rock. Anyways, I never taught Crystal's Quilava Dig, so I'm gonna rectify it here and now. Now, I will save in front of Kurt's house because I need to be morning and 
it's late enough as it is in real life, so I'll save my game and tune in for the night, and I'll be back in the morning. Good night, everybody. sleep last night, so let's talk to Kurt after we spent the whole night pitching a tent right in front of his do front door. So we got our 99 green, uh, friend balls, and now we're going to give him the 99 black apricorns so that he'll turn into heavy balls, uh, when we next speak to him, uh, which would be tomorrow. But before I continue on, I want to be able to move the friend balls to the second atop spot. Because we plan on- because the friend ball is going to be the only other Pokeball that I will be using for the rest of this playthrough. Besides Master Balls. So first we're going to heal at the Pokemon Center since I fed Togepi and... Togepi and Eevee, 10 HP ups. And now we're gonna go ahead and try to make our next capture. It's still morning, so I decided I wanted to go ahead and try to capture our next Pokemon right here and now. Ladian. Yeah, I actually forgot to capture Lady way back when I first played Crystal. So this is my grand opportunity to go ahead and capture one. Alright. In the daytime, when it gets warm, it curls up inside a big leaf and drifts off into a deep slumber. Alright, and now that I've got the morning Pokemon, there's only a couple Pokemon that are still available to us that I've yet to catch. And a huge bulk of them is gonna be why we'll be spending the rest of this episode trying to obtain. You see, I have actually completely, uh, skimped off on the daycare center this entire time. And uh, for good reason. In Gold and Silver, it's just a normal daycare center where you take your Pokemon... Where you leave your Pokemon behind so they can gain experience points with every step. By the way, I'm gonna go- it's a new day, so I'm giving Eevee a new haircut. I nipped the delighted response, so Eevee gets the most points for affection. But in Pokemon Crystal, they actually added a component. In Japanese Crystal, this component is like an egg ticket to use for... Uh, for like a, for like a, uh, Japanese crystal specific a Pokemon Center. By the way, I was just searching around for a hidden item. That's what I was doing. Looks like I already picked it up. So, nah, but here he'll, because this functionality was never implemented. They just give you the egg straight, straight up. But before we actually go ahead and get these eggs and dupe them all, I'm just going to clear out my bo my uh, Pokemon box. Slowbro and Slowpoke right here. And I'm doing this... Not because I don't think there's no more Pokemon left to level up or level grind. But specifically because I need to leave room in my 
PC box, for, depending on however long it would take me to wrap this section up. So Yamma here, Meryl, top of A1 to 20. And I'm moving all my Pokemon in Dexor, so I thought for- Hey, look, Poly World's got an item. That's- is it? Ooh, he's holding a King's Rock, alright. Nice. So I don't have to dupe the King's Rock at all. I have everything- I have the two King's Rocks ready to evolve my two Pokemon. That's nice. I also need to leave space in my party for these eggs, so I could hatch them in bulk. Because, yes, I'm gonna use the duplication trick to try and nab all seven eggs. But more to the point, I'm actually gonna try and nab shiny variants of each of the seven eggs. So, I'm actually gonna spare you the, uh, I'm just gonna let the dialogue play out. It's not terribly interesting. But, I'm actually going to spare you the first lengthy walk cycle. Have you gone to Fishing Rod? You can catch Pokemon by fishing. So, that's for catching 88 Pokemon. I'm doing this because I'm going to hit the 90s range. Real, real soon. So I'm just gonna skip ahead. I already did this six, so six eggs later. So this is egg number seven here. And I had to manipulate the frame right before I got- before I- when he says, Alright then, this is yours to keep. I hold the frames until I find the shiny variant of a Pokemon I still need to hatch. So I can only really- now there are seven eggs, I can only hold six Pokemon at a time. And I need at least one active Pokemon of my party, so most of my eggs I can have is five. Toka, P, and Eevee still need that to have their affection rate boosted. And oh yeah, it's no longer morning, it's midday now. That's literally how long it took. By the way, I didn't just... I didn't just tat... I didn't just box the eggs as soon as I got them. I actually bolstered my step count just high enough for a sound could to be audibly heard. And the first Pokemon up was a Shiny Cletha. Which is actually the second egg that I got. The first egg is coming up shortly. And something I don't realize straight away is, oh yeah, I probably would want to hatch all my Pokemon in Goldenrod. That's important because wherever your Pokemon hatches, your affection rate with that Pokemon gets an additional boost every time it goes up. This is only applicable in Crystal, though. In Gold Silver, it doesn't matter where you hatch the Pokemon or caught the Pokemon. There is no extra boost, and it's hard to tell, but that is a shiny Ella kid. So I think something happened there when I was trying to press start, and I was just so I guess sounds inside. So that's just confirmation that yes, all the Pokemon here are shiny. Now, because I just got this Magby egg, this is going to take a really, really long while to complete. 
But so long as I actually hatch my Pokemon and just keep bolstering every the step count in Goldenrod, I can get have a huge boost in affection every time I give a Pokemon that needs to evolve via happiness. A boost in affection. And there's Shiny Iglybuff. Yay! That's the third Pokemon. Again, it'll take a while before the last Poke Egg actually hatches. So, I'm just going to go ahead and withdraw the remaining eggs. It should be noted that, again, the Rayo Tower is treated as a separate location from Goldenrod City for some reason. Probably because later on it's going to be you turn into a dungeon for us to explore. But that's kind of interesting that the Rayo Tower is treated as a separate location from Goldenrod. Even though the radio tower is a golden rod. I don't know. Game, game designers and all that jazz. So who's this one? Ooh, a shiny smoochum. And she's pink. Something worth knowing is that with one exception, every single odd egg that hatches will always be female, no matter what. I have no idea why it's a guaranteed female, but I guess it's to prevent some of a certain move that they all start with, called Dizzy, pu dizzy Punch, from being passed down via egg group. The reason why there's one exception which will always be male instead is because that Pokemon cannot be female under any circumstances. And by the way, the reason why I'm manipulating these shiny encounters is because the odds of any Pokemon that you hatch from the odd eggs being shiny is fairly decent. And we got ourselves a red Pikachu. Uh, Red Peachy, I sh sorry. So there's two more eggs left to hatch. So I have to be close to the third, to the sixth egg. And by the way, Eli Kid was the first egg I got, then Cleffa, then Iglybuff. Then Smoochum, then Pichu. And there's two more to go. The next one hatch will obviously be number six. And honestly, I was not expecting this one this early, because it took forever before I just saw a single one of these. A shiny top and the first one I got was a shiny. First Tyro guy Got, ran into this entire time was shiny. Like, I encountered quite a few Magbees, quite a few Elikids, quite a few Smoochums, quite a number of Pichus, and a buttload of Clethas and Eggly Buffs. And it took until the sixth egg before I ran into a single Tyrogue. And that Tyrogue well, ha just so happen to be shiny. Then, while farming for the seventh and final Pokemon that I need a hatch, I suddenly kept getting a bunch of plain Jane Tyrogues. And what's crazy about all this is that Peach is supposed to be the rarest Pokemon here. By the way, all three of these Pokemon evolve via max happiness, so... Hatching Pichu, Cleffa, and Iglybuff in Golarazzi will give them a huge affection boost. 
as would keeping a step count in Goldenrod. Give them a huge step boost. Which is why I'm feeding them all HP ups right now. It's the same thing I did with Eevee in this same town. Goldenrod safe, fed him 10 HP ups to bolster his happiness even more. Or I did the same thing with Togepi in New Bark Town when he hatched over there. So I'm just feeding them a bunch of HP ups until he can, well, until they can't take them anymore. This kind of fight, guys. Apart from Tyrogue, all these Pokemon are girls. Tyrogue will never be female because it is a male, it is an exclusively male Pokemon. His evolutions are all uh, all exclusively male. This fight, because Matchop, Machoke, and Machamp are some of the buff, are some of the buffest looking Pokemon ever, and yet they have a 50% chance of being female. The traded Matchop that you get in Gold, Silver, Crystal is always female because it's designed to counter Whitney's gym. Yeah, it's gonna take a really, 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 really long time before Magby finally hatches. Uh, Smoochum, Elikid, and Magby are basically among the... ...the Pokémon that require the largest step counts of any Pokémon to hatch. Whereas Pichu, Cleffa, and Iglypuff are among the smallest. I'm not sure where Tyrogue falls in line with the rest of them, but I think he's either somewhere in the middle or on the higher ends, alongside Mag... Smoochum, Elikid, and Magby. So, why am I doing this now? Honestly, I'm going to spoil it for you, but... At a future point, I'm actually going to be duping all my rare candies. And I'm going to actually use them to try to evolve... Pichu, Cleffa, and Iglybuff into Pikachu, Clefairy, and Jigglypuff, respectively, and get those three Pokemon ready to evolve again via Evolution Stone. Tyrogue, obviously, I'm going to dupe a couple, t get to level 19, dupe a couple times, and then get them so that there is is a uh, strength and defense values are equal to what I want for an aura evolve him into him only with more attack, hit Monchan with more defense, or hit Montop with an equal amount. And finally, Smoochum, Elikid, and Magby all evolve at level 30. And guess what? And it's those latter three evolutions that I'm gunning for. Because their evolved forms, apart from Smoochum's evolved form, isn't until the late game. And in case of Magbar, the really, really late game. I'm just checking how m if he's moving around or making sounds or anything, because it really does feel like this is taking forever. So yeah, I that is basically my gist. I'm going to evolve them into Jinx, Electabuzz, and Magmar specifically so I could get those three Pokemon, so I could get Crystal ready to conduct the next, the final couple sets of trades with Yellow, and get all that 
cross generation train over and done with right away. Because this is the thing I want to beat Pokemon Yellow first, then Gold and Silver, and then Crystal in that order. So I'm going to cheat a little. I actually gave it some heavy, heavy consideration. I ultimately decided it'd be in my best interest to just dupe the rare candies and nuggets as per usual. And then evolve all my Pokemon to what I need them to be. However, I'm not gonna go super crazy with the evolutions. Just the stuff that's either mandatory or would be useful. Or in the case of the shiny babies, just to make sure I have a complete shiny set of Pokemon. I want to get as many shiny Pokemon as possible in these... During these, uh... During the Gen 2 games. By the way, Gen 1, the only shiny Pokemon I caught in Generation 1 was... The Cubone I still have in yellow. Not the one I traded for Machoke, which then evolved into Machamp. I mean... I mean the Cubone I'm still holding on to. So I definitely need to dupe that and then trade that over... So I definitely need to trade that over to Crystal and add that to my collection. Even though Crystal version could just catch his own... Catch their own, uh... Cubone. So, I'm just checking the egg periodically because it's a little concerning that he still has- that she still hasn't hatched yet. Tyrog's the only he. All the others are she's. So, we're definitely getting there with Tyrog, but I'm gonna just stick it inside of, uh... Rod City, so every single one of the odd eggs can be a tribute to that town. But I don't need to worry about Max Max happiness with Smoochum, Elec what Illicit or Bagby. Because they uh Because they evolve at level 30. A Tyro guy only really care about his uh, attack and defense stats. But but Togepi, Eevee, Pichu, Cleffa, Igglypuff, I care about their happiness. There are also, I believe, two other Pokemon whose happiness values I care a ton about. Yeah, I think two more. And I can actually capture them, which is also the reason why I made a big deal about getting 99 friend balls to Kirk. So we're get we're almost there, we're almost there. It's just a matter of time now before Magby finally decides that he, that she's ready. Now will I tell if Magby is a shiny without checking his uh, stats screen? Well, the difference between Magby and normal Magby and shiny Magby is that normal Magby is red, like a dark red color, whereas shiny Magby is ba is practically pink, pinkish orange, I would say. So, really, really bright colors. And by the way, as I said, I manipped each and every single one of these eggs. Definitely a really bright orange right here. So, that's how you know that's a shiny. So now that I got all the hatched all the baby Pokemon in the game. Just gotta deposit Magby here. 
me withdraw Mew here. So I can teleport back to- so I can have the means to teleport all the way back to Ecratique City. Why Ecratique City? It's so I can heal up the baby. Now, I did think about maybe continuing on the episode a little while longer, try to ca maybe catch the Red Gyarados at Lake of Rage or pick up the last item, but all that's gonna have to go on the to-do list. But first, let's check that's where our Pokedex again. Excellent, you seem like collecting- you seem to like collecting things. Yeah, sure do. I have 95 Pokemon. And I have a complete set of shiny babies apart from Togepi. Togepi is not shiny, unfortunately. Now, their place in the Pokedex store is fairly easy to manage. Sucho's 238. Elikit. It also saves me from having to catch Jinx at night. Because Ice Path has really, really weird encounter distribution of encounters, not just based on what floor, but what time of day as well. That doesn't really gel terribly well. So I need to make so I need to make the necessary adjustments too. Getting Smoochum and evolving her into, Jin into Jinx will definitely be a big help. So I'm moving all my Pokemon to the PC and... I'm actually just gonna continue on with the story and head... And head west to Olivine City right now. But first I'm gonna read the Pokedex entries of the baby Pokemon and then I'll be ready to sign out. Alright, alright, all right. there we are. It is unskilled at storing electric power. Any kind of shock causes it to discharge energy spontaneously. If the impact site of a meteorite is found, this Pokemon is certain to be within the immediate area. Instead of walking with its short legs, it moves around by bouncing on its soft, tender body. And that's it for this section, now then for the next. To brush up on its fine skills, it will challenge anyone. It has a very strong competitive spirit. The sensitivity of its lips develops most quickly. It uses them to try to identify unknown objects. It loves violent thunder. The space between its horns flickers bluish-white when it is charging energy. It naturally spits an 1100 degree flame. It is said, when many appear, it heralds a volcanic eruption. So if you like this video, please leave a like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. With all out of the way, this is Mike Gorn, signing out.